I love this trick. I use it almost in every painting now. Yay. <laughs> Do you avoid wet and wet techniques like the plague because they're so scary and you've got it in your head that they're so difficult that you don't even want to try them? Well, today I hope to help calm your fears a little bit with a tool that I just found. It's actually a test that you can do to make sure that you do not run into the dreaded cauliflower. What's a cauliflower? A cauliflower happens when you're painting wet and wet and then your painting kind of half dries and then it gets to that magic time when if you drip too drippy a paint in it, it cauliflowers. Let's take a look at what cauliflowers look like. I'll take you on a little tour of my gallery here, which I've lined up with some cauliflowered examples for you. This is the other side of my camera right now. All right, so I like to actually use cauliflowers. And here is a perfect example. This pom-pom is a huge cauliflower. And uh, often mistake cauliflowers look more like this, where you've had a smooth, beautiful wash and then you make a mistake and you drip too drippy of paint into your half dry paint and it creates a cauliflower. So that's a cauliflower and it usually happens when you're painting wet and wet. But here is an example where I used what I call my push technique. And that's when I drop clear water. I drop the clear water like right here on the white and it pushes into this dark, thicker, half wet, half dry paint and it makes these beautiful furred out effects. And this is a work in progress. This is a boo. A uh, reference photo from my friend Karen Sturzenegger of Abu, who lives in Zanzibar, but I used little tiny cauliflowers in the background to give it some interest. Just really delicate, light little cauliflowers, and I do that all the time. And so I'm going to show you in this tutorial how I do that. You want to come say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. What's your name? Paco. And why are you home with Mommy today? Because I'm sick. I will talk to you a little bit at the end of this video about a bonus tip about another trick that you can use to make sure that you're getting cauliflowers or not getting cauliflowers and how you can control that even more effectively. I hear from students online all the time that one of their biggest flaws as a painter is they're not good at waiting for their paint to dry. So this test will also help somewhat with that, I think, because it will give you a test that shows you if it's okay to paint on your painting or if you do need to let it dry. <laughs> Can't get a break. So let's talk about a few terms before we go any further because we're gonna be talking about wet and wet a lot and cauliflowers a lot. So wet and wet painting is just when you're painting on wet paper and it might be wet with clear water or it might be wet with tea consistency paint, which I have a video about that I talked about a couple of weeks ago, so be sure to check that out. I'll link that here and it will not take you out of the video. It will just queue it up for you to watch later. Wet and wet technique is considered one of the more difficult techniques because it depends on your timing a lot to get the technique and the look that you want. So if you go in with too wet a paint or too dry a paint or too drippy of a brush or too wet of a brush, it can affect how your painting looks. And it's a lot easier to lose control with wet and wet techniques than wet on dry techniques, which wet on dry is a wet paintbrush on dry paper. Before I get to this trick, I wanna show you why it's so important to me personally. I love to use cauliflowers, so I wanna show you a little demonstration of how I use cauliflowers in a lot of my work, almost every painting. So one of my favorite things to do with wet and wet techniques and cauliflowers is to splat clear water on my backgrounds to get a textured look. But the problem is, when do I splat the water? If I splat it too soon, the water droplets I splat will just disappear into the painting smoothly and nothing will appear. There will be no beautiful texture. If I splat it too late, then I won't get any texture because it will be too dry and it won't show up. So I've needed a test for a long time and now I have one. Okay, you have waited long enough. I wanna share this test with you and it comes to you courtesy of Jean Carbonetti and her book, The Tao of Watercolor. And she uses cauliflowers a lot in her work and she developed a test to make sure her paint is ready to receive splats of water or drips of water 
to create the cauliflowers perfectly to get the effect she wants. So her test is this. You're painting along happily, you decide, hmm, I wonder if my paper is at the cauliflower stage because I wanna prevent that or I wanna cause that. I'm gonna do the thumbprint test. What's the thumbprint test? The thumbprint test is when you push your thumb into your wet paint. If the wet paint holds your thumbprint, it is in the cauliflowering stage. And if you splat water on it, drip water on it, go in with too drippy of a paint, you run the risk of cauliflowers, which might be good. It might be bad. Now, conversely, if you want to see if you can keep painting without the risk, running the risk of creating cauliflowers, you can do the thumbprint test. And if you do the thumbprint test and it doesn't hold your thumbprint, then it's probably still safe to paint in that area without getting cauliflowers. Okay, and just remember, if you want to learn more about cauliflowers and how to use them, how I use them in my work, I will link a free video here. And now for the extra bonus tip, and that is to use different paints depending on how much cauliflower you want. If you don't want a lot of cauliflowers, I found that heavier paints, which makes sense they don't move as much, is like ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, burnt sienna. These are paints that don't cauliflower as much. And I have had the experience of trying to create cauliflowers like for my snow paintings and nothing. I don't get hardly any cauliflowers. And if I do, they're really soft and subtle and they do not look like falling snow. Whereas if you use finer grained paints, like staining paints especially, I think, I've noticed like the thallows specifically, thallows cauliflower really heavily, really dramatically. And also they respond to salt effects really dramatically. So if you're painting those snowy scenes and you want to have salt effects and cauliflower effects, use thallow blues, which if any of y'all follow me, you know I don't like phthalo blue. It's too staining, it's hard to fix. But if you're painting a loose, wet and wet background with snowy effects and cauliflowers and salt effects, like in this painting, these are all thanks to the power of the cauliflower and phthalo blue. <laughs> so that's a really good paint that really cauliflowers out. And in fact, on the website handprint.com, he measures all different kinds of characteristics of paint. And one of the things that he measures is how much it cauliflowers. And so you can look up your paints and see which ones cauliflower more or less. If you go to handprint.com, I will put a link below for that as well. Hey, do y'all wanna hang out a little longer? It's the next day and Parker's in school and now I can think straight. And it took me forever to just edit all that video that you just saw, but I had more things I wanted to show you, but. I forgot so much stuff because it was so crazy yesterday. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to any of those who have kids or have had kids. <laughs> it gets nuts, but I want to show you a few more things. So I also don't know how good of a job I did at communicating how key timing is. And I was thinking about making this a whole nother video about how the secret to advanced watercolor painting, a lot of it is timing. And that's what's so exciting about this test because it helps you figure out if the timing is right to get more advanced effects that come from using more watery paint or avoiding cauliflowers or creating cauliflowers. Did I get that across? I don't know. But anyway, do you guys wanna see more of this book and why it's so inspiring? Also, I want to put a picture up here. I'm gonna put a picture up on screen right now. Uh, let me move over. I'll put it right here. Of Yutaka Murakami's work. And he is one of the ones that really inspired me to paint with cauliflowers because they make su such amazing fur effects. And also Andre, is it Pavanak? His paintings are amazing. He uses cauliflowers too with Sumi ink. And I just did this Sumi ink chick and I'm sure I will have a video coming up soon of this Sumi ink chick. So those creators really have inspired me, but also Jean Carbonati has inspired me. So I went to World Market the other day and look at these pretty plates. I think they're so cool for making palettes. All right, so I have a few of her paintings bookmarked where she has used cauliflowers. Is that gorgeous or is that gorgeous? She even used cauliflower effects for these little ripples. You can tell the way they're kind of uh, cauliflowered out. There's another cool one that she did. And she even used cauliflowers to create flower 
looking components in her painting. Look at that one. I don't want to show off all her book because uh, as an artist supporting artist, I want you to go buy her book if you are interested in her kind of techniques of painting. And another fun painting, if y'all want to come over to my Patreon and just play with cauliflowers, you can make really cool dandelions with cauliflowers. See how I did that in this painting? And I did like five other paintings of dandelions with cauliflower techniques. So I need to do more of them. They're just so fun. And I use the same kind of idea to create the furry edges of this mama polar bear. I just love how that came out. I just find it exciting to get a, such an interesting, dramatic look to my work. Let me show you a little uh, demonstration that I did showing how I used the thumbprint test to do the splat effects. Oh, look, perfect. Let's, so here, let me show you a really cool technique I love to do all the time for backgrounds when I have perfect buckling, buckling paper. I'll get my clean, clear water brush. It's got drippy water and go splat, splat, splat. And now look, how cool a um, snow effect would that make? I'm letting it cauliflower out. You can also babysit, like this is almost dry. So you can see that it's half dry and it's as long as it's a little bit wet here, I can go in where I had these cauliflowers and, and put even more water to enhance the cauliflower effect. I call this babysitting and I do it all the time. And see, now that cauliflower is really showing up. So see, this is what you should be doing as a beginner. This is what you should be doing as an advanced artist. It's doing these silly little stupid experiments where you're not really painting anything of substance but you're learning about your art materials and how they interact leave me a comment to help me understand you as my audience what you're interested in and what you want to hear from me about and right now i'm leaning towards making this channel more advanced techniques heavy so that's why i wanted to do today's tutorial because this is definitely an advanced wet and wet technique that really excites me as an artist who's been painting for 20 years now. But I'd love to hear what you all would enjoy seeing and I'm totally open to ideas. So subscribe, like this video, leave me a comment, go binge my other content. All that tells the algorithm you love me and that helps me grow my channel. Thank you to my Patreon members who make this channel possible. I could not do it without you and your financial support means the world to me. Join my Patreon for a year and get two months free. You can check out what tutorials I have available to see if you're interested in what I teach, which is mostly wet and wet, dreamy, advanced tutorials, which for me, even when I was a beginner, that's what I like to see. I was too bored by super beginner things. So you might enjoy it and some people don't. <laughs> they feel overwhelmed. So it just depends on what you're interested in. And if you have questions, message me. You can message me through Facebook. I will put a link here for my Facebook group where you can come and post your paintings or also chime in and let other people know what you think of their paintings. And we have a really fun, vibrant community over there. So I'd love you to join the fun there. And thank you so much for watching. Now, now go water. <laughs> now go watercolor your world. See you next time. Bye, everybody. Mm. Bye. Now go watercolor your world and be brave. Now go all color your world and be brave. Good job, Boo.